One of the biggest debates that is currently circulating in the FNAF fandom is that whether this funky yellow rabbit and the burnt old man are either William, I always come back Afton, or the mimic mimicking Afton. And I think a lot of people who are on the Afton side of this argument are confused on why the mimic would mimic Afton in the first place, and why we rarely see it mimicking Afton in the books, all the while we see glitch trap a lot more in the games. So me, being on the mimic is Malhair side, wanted to tackle this specific part of this argument. Basically this video isn't debunking William is glitch trap, burn trap or anything like that. This video is just me theorizing why mimic became an Afton copycat in the first place, why it stayed like that for a long time, and why it stopped. So when do we see or hear about Glitch Trap in the franchise? First is his appearance in Help Wanted, where he wanted to escape the game, so he infected Vanessa and traps a part of her mind in the game's code, which resulted in the creation of a new personality called Vanny. In Princess Quest, Glitch Trap appears before the princess, before consuming her into the darkness. Glitch Trap spouts the iconic line of, I always come back, then saying, let me out, possibly referencing Glitch Trap's goal of escaping the VR game. We have Burn Trap and Security Breach, the Tales epilogues show the Mimic with rabbit ears, even though he just acts like regular Mimic instead of Burn Trap, and lastly in GGY where Gregory's pen name is Dr. Rabbit, making it clear that Gregory is controlled by Glitchtrap at this moment in time. So Glitchtrap has been around for a long time, but why don't we see it directly in the books? And why can't we see the mimic Endo itself mimicking Afton like Burntrap in the Tales epilogues? Many people that are on the mimic side believe Glitchtrap is Mimic's Mimic One program, taking the form of the yellow rabbit. And like the Mimic Endo, it switches between costumes and personalities. But how about we look deeper into that? Because I think the explanation is possibly more complex than that. So let's look at the books again and truly understand Mimic's character and programming. Mimic is shown time and time again that it tries to fit in into its environment. It constantly wears costumes that are spread around the FNAF 6 location to make itself look like one of the empty costumes, before popping out and start killing. He also lures its victims by mimicking cries of help. And in Ruin, it even makes a Gregory costume to try and fit in and trick Cassie. Mimic's programming, Mimic 1, can also create or corrupt digital characters, which it can control. For example, when the Mimic 1 storyteller takes control of the Pizzaplex's AR, VR, and arcade games, it glitches out almost all of them. In Tiger Rock, we are introduced to a new character called Tiger Rock, a glam rock animatronic that acts a lot like the Mimic. Then when a kid tries the VR booth with the new Tiger Rock character, Tiger Rock seemingly traps the kid in the VR booth for who knows how long. Then, in the Monty Within, a kid plays a VR food fight game and chooses Orville Elephant as his player, with Monty as his NPC partner. To make it simpler for the video, I will just call the both of them Tag Team Orville and Tag Team Monty. As Kane is playing the game, he sees that Tag Team Monty is mimicking Kane's moves and begins studying him. Eventually, Tag Team Monty uses Kane's moves without him even playing the game. And finally, just before the end of the game, Monty merges with Kane's left side of the brain via digital consciousness transference and is able to half control Kane. So it's obvious that Tag Team Monty has a very clear connection to the Mimic. Then we have Helpy in Ruin, who is controlled by the Mimic, and Eclipse in Balloon World. So these four are all connected to the Mimic, through the Storyteller and or the Vanny network. So are they all directly the Mimic 1 program, switching between personalities like how Mimic switches between costumes? I don't think so. I suggest that these guys are somewhat separate digital entities, 
all created as a result of the Mimic One program taking control of the Pizzaplex. Here's a few reasons. Helpy is presented as a separate entity to the Mimic itself. Throughout the game, Helpy and Fake Gregory talk about each other like they're separate entities. Also, Fake Gregory tells Cassie that he upgraded Helpy with a signal jammer to combat Mexus. So Mimic created an AI replica of regular Helpy that it can somewhat control and even upgrade to trick Cassie and making her trust it and to combat the security system keeping it down there. Even though it's a separate entity. And I say separate very loosely. Note, Blue-Eyed Helpy is also controlled by the Mimic. Not just the orange-eyed one. Because Blue-Eyed Helpy also wants you to shut off the nodes and find your friend. Furthermore, Tag Team Monty is shown to leave the VR game with Kane. But the Mimic 1 program is still in the Pizzaplex systems. So Tag Team Monty isn't just the Mimic 1 program, but a digital entity that is created from it. So what if, like Tag Team Monty and Helpy, these other guys are separate digital entities created by the Mimic 1 program, that can act and do what they want, but are still tethered by Mimic 1 due to the Storyteller and or the Vanny network. So what does the storyteller actually do? In the story itself, Mr. Burroughs explains what the storyteller does. It's a simple template style software that takes pieces of previously created stories and rearranges them into new scenarios for VR, AR and arcade games. So when the storyteller takes control of the games, it creates new stories by using pieces of the old stories and rearranging them. So Eclipse is a digital entity that acts more evil than Moon. Tag Team Monty is a digital entity that acts just like Monty, but more douchey. Tiger Rock is a Glamrock OC for the Mimic, so it acts more like the Mimic. And Helpy is a corrupted version of Helpy. The storyteller is basically making mini Mimic ones with every game and animatronic it infects. So I started using my old monkey brain and started asking myself, what truly is Glitch Trap? What if instead of Glitch Trap being just Mimic 1, he was a rogue AI like the others, created by the main Mimic 1 program, instead of just being the Mimic itself? I mean, let's look at the quote again. It's a simple template style software that takes pieces of previously created stories and rearranging them into new scenarios for VR, AR and arcade games. And what is Glitchtrap? A literal character from the past stories mimicking the missing children's incident. This digital entity now thinks or acts like William Afton because it was programmed to but it has an added flair of being a mascot suit rather than a spring suit like how Mimic likes to wear mascot suits. This would help explain why the Mimic in the epilogues doesn't mostly act like Burn Trap. It's because the anomaly is somewhat its own thing. It was born from the VR game and can't connect back to the original Mimic unless manually. There is no storyteller or Vanny network to connect everything yet. Even when the storyteller is active, Glitch Trap is still on its own, because it's not directly Mimic 1. It is its own thing, like Tag Team Monty. Another reason as of why Mimic 1 decided to make this digital entity act like Afton is because as we discussed, Mimic likes to fit in into its environment. It wants to blend in as best it can and wait for the right moment to strike. So Mimic 1 choosing William Afton is fitting, since he's supposed to be the big bad of the indie games and help wanted in general. The digital entities trying to fit in is something we see as well. Eclipse fitting in with Sun and Moon, Tag Team Monty is just Monty, Tiger Rock being a glam rock, Helpy acting mostly like regular Helpy. The reason this digital entity knew Afton so much is because it learned Fazbear's history through Help Wanted. If Glitchtrap is its own digital entity, rather than just being Mimic itself, it would explain why we rarely see him in the tale stories. It's because most of the time, 
he was not connected to anything. But then as we see from Princess Quest, Glitch Trap eventually becomes part of the Pizzaplex systems. But how does Burn Trap fit into all this? Why would Mimic turn into Burn Trap if Glitch Trap was its own thing? Well, there's two answers I can come up with. In Ruin, Mimic could have made a Gregory costume to try to blend in and trick Cassie. So it's highly possible that it did the same with Glitch Trap with the help of Annie. But there is also another idea I have. What if the Mimic didn't choose to become Burn Trap? Last time we saw the Mimic was in the last Tales epilogue, where he was springlocked in a court jester suit and deactivated. Vanny is a disciple of Glitch Trap, so what if she went down there, took the chance to repair a Mimic while he's deactivated, and forcefully turned him into Burn Trap? The Mimic itself would connect to the Vanny network, and like most of the other bots in Security Breach, Burn Trap is controlled by Vanny. That's why, after Security Breach, the Mimic got rid of the flesh and suit. It didn't choose to be Burn Trap in the first place. Moving on, this rogue AI theory can also apply to Vanny as well, believe it or not. Remember, Glitch Trap didn't merge with Vanessa, but he corrupted her, trapping a part of her mind to the VR game. So what if Glitch Trap replaced that part of her mind with another mini Mimic 1 that eventually became Vanny? This Vanny AI would also mimic things it saw, for example, possibly basing its suit design to the Silver Parasol game's White Rabbit character, and also mimicking this line from Hand Unit. Are you having fun yet? That's great to hear. Are you having fun yet? But unlike some of the other guys, the goal of this Vanny AI would be helping Glitch Trap, like how Helpy helped the Mimic. So let's recap what we just discussed. When the original Mimic circuit board was scanned for the Freddy Fazbear virtual experience, the code created a digital entity that tied in with the past stories. It becomes the main antagonist of the game. Since the anomaly was born from the VR game and was stuck in it, it was separate from the main Mimic itself. So it wanted to escape. It corrupts Vanessa's mind by creating a digital entity called Vanny that did Glitch Trap's bidding. The original Mimic is sent to the FNAF 6 location, and since Glitch Trap is still separate from it, Mimic acts like it usually does. Eventually, the original circuit boards of the Mimic is used again for the Storyteller, which resulted in Mimic 1 connecting to the Pizzaplex and corrupting it. It corrupts the game's main animatronic band, the VR booths, and etc. Then Vanny and Glamrock Freddy clear the path and find Mimic. Then Vanny turns Mimic into Burn Trap, but after the Princess Quest ending, Mimic breaks free from Vanny's control and goes back like he was. So what do you think of this theory? Leave your thoughts down below and thanks for watching. See you on the flip side.